for data transfer, intelligence, and collaboration. And our first scenario is re with reporting. And for this example, we're going to create a report in Excel. I'd like to introduce you to Steve Close, our technical director. Good afternoon, everybody. Hello there, Steve. And having access to key performance indicators in a timely manner and in a format of choice is imperative to providing companies with the information they need to make good business decisions. That's right, Andy. And that's why businesses use Route 1 for reporting. The example we're going to uh, see today is for an annual sales report that is said to be produced every morning and sent by email to predefined groups. We've got to define post-processing as an option later on to further enhance the data so you can see the example of how you can put pivot tables and corporate formatting into your delivered spreadsheet. Sounds exciting, Steve. Can't wait. Let it rip. Okay, if I log on to the S400, onto the iSeries, I'll show you how you create a Route 1 definition to extract the data. There's two stages to it. The definition itself is where you define on the iSeries where the data is going to come from. If I go into files, if I'm going to get the data from database files, it's a, uh, purely here you specify the names of the files and the libraries that they reside in. If you're going to get the data from a spool file, you put a keyword in there, star spool file. At this stage, it may be necessary to define the database links, i.e. the links between the two files, but in my case, they're already predefined in the data dictionary, so I don't need to do that. So I'm extracting my sales data from my SHU 2001 file, and I'm going to the customer file to get the name, because I want that to be in my formatted spreadsheet. In this example, I've created some result fields. They're actually conditional result fields. And what this table is doing within the product is it's saying, I'm looking at the region number, and I'm converting it to a name. So I'm creating a conditional result field. So if the region is MID, I want it to put Midlands into the spreadsheet, and NE is Northeast, etc. I could, of course, have got those from a file if I had the file with the uh, region names and descriptions on. In this case, I, I, I would use the table, just to show you that functionality. After I've defined the files, then it's just a matter of selecting the fields that I wish to output to my spreadsheet in this case. Down the left-hand side here are the names of the fields that are input from my files. And down the right-hand side, I can put either field names or text or both into my output formatted file, in which case it's going to be a spreadsheet. When I've completed the definition, I save it, and you'll see there's a box there that says generate program. What that means is Route 1 will generate you an ILE RPG program to do the data extraction. This is one way that uh, we optimize the performance on the iSeries by extracting the data. After the definition is created, the second stage is by creating what we call an FTP request. Now this is where I tell the product which definition to run and where to send it to and what format I want the data in. If you look at the one I've created here, it's called sales. The two key things here are the FTP user, in this case it's Steve, which is my local PC here. That just tells it when I extract the data, I want to send it down to my PC. And down the bottom here, what format do I want it in? If I press F4 on that field, you'll see these are all the different formats that Route 1 can convert data into. So I can create documents, email messages, HTML pages, MySQL, Oracle, PDF. The list goes on and on and on. In this case, I'm just going to create an Excel spreadsheet. Now to run this from within Route 1, I can just put a 7 next to it to run it interactively, 8 to submit it to batch. What normally you would do is you would put this into your own scheduler or into your CL programs because Route 1 is completely command driven. Now, what has happened now is that the Route 1 product has extracted the data from the iSeries database, sent it down to the PC, and you see here the Route 1 client which is sitting on the PC is uh, waiting for the data to arrive and this is what has happened. It's received a CSV file and it's converted into an Excel spreadsheet based on the criteria I defined. Now I could navigate to the folder uh, that file has been created in. If I just click here, the clear window button, <laughs> and then click the view the file button, you'll see this is the data that's been downloaded into my spreadsheet. So I've got the conditional result field there with the region and the name. Okay, that's very basic data download. 
to make the data more presentable, what you can do within Route 1, you can specify that before the, data, the spreadsheet is opened, it will present, it will run a macro for you to make the data look nicer and format. It's very simple to do. If I go back into my FTP request, I do F7 for options, and it's down here it says macro name. What I need to do here is just put the name of the macro that I want Route 1 to run for me before the, the data is presented, and then the path to where that macro lives. So that is in my Route 1 folder, and it is called process.xls. It's just a matter of running that again. Then if I go back into my Route 1 client, you see the Route 1 client is in the system tray there. It's gone green. That means it's processing. If I open it up, you'll see now it's, uh, as well as running the data, let to then run that macro post-process. And if I view the file now, you'll see the data looks completely different. Okay, you could have put anything in here I like. I could have put logos in. I could have put pie charts in. What we've done is just summarize the data by region and made it so you can open it up to look at the data for any particular region. So the use of macros is a very powerful methodology in presenting data to your users. Terrific. Thank you very much, Steve. Very enlightening. So to summarize, we demonstrated how easy it is to take data from any IBM database, transform it, and populate spreadsheets. Now what's key here is that it doesn't have to be one database. You may have an ERP system with all your data in for transport in one system, but you want to merge it with other information from a different database.